YouTube, 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 it's Rico, man. I'm back with another video, man. Y'all see what we got going on, man. We got part two for Travel or Ross's North London's Bloody Gang War OFB versus N9. So you already know what time it is, man. Brand new to the channel or you've been watching videos on the channel but not yet subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Now, don't forget to tell your family and friends about the channel. And hopefully they become supporters of the channel. And make sure you guys are smashing that like button and commenting on the video to help the video get recommended to a larger audience of people and hopefully bring in new supporters to the channel as well. And also, don't forget to um, turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss out on new uploads. And be sure you don't miss out on new uploads. Check out the channel every day before y'all go to bed or when y'all wake up in the morning. And also, don't forget to follow my IG at LMER. I help me get to 500 followers. Everything else y'all need to know about my other social media platforms is down in the description box down below. So make sure you check them out. And other than that, y'all know what's going on. So let me start the screen record. Got started and we're going to start the video now. There's ZT, the self-proclaimed CSS chest shot specialist, because, you know, he'll shank you in the chest. Now, 3x3 and the 9 have other rappers that are affiliated with the area, and apologies to anyone from Edmonton who didn't get a mention, but you know how it goes, there's too many names. So let's take a closer look at some of the events that caused the decades-long deadly war between Tottenham and Edmonton. Jesus Christ is the most important person who ever lived, and yet there's so much we don't know about him. So the war between Tottenham and the Greens has been going on for literally decades. And as a result of the violence spilling out on the streets, the feud is very well known to the police. What we do know is there is a long-standing and very violent feud between gangs in Wood Green and a rival gang in the Tottenham area. However, recently with the rise of social media and the popularity of drill music, people on the internet have never been so desperate to find out what's actually going on in the streets between these two warring groups. Many scoreboard videos are floating around the internet claiming to detail the many shootings and stabbings that have gone down between specific members of these groups, usually based on rumors from internet forums, but this isn't that kind of video. Instead today, we're going to be taking an overall look at all of the most serious incidents in these areas that at least made it to the news or social media, following along how the war on the street ended up spawning several rappers from each area who would go on to give detail about the beef in the streets in lyrics of their music. Now, much like we've discussed in videos about the deadly gang wars in Chicago and Jacksonville in the past, this beef started as simply as just teenagers from these two different areas, having after-school fistfights back in the early noughties. With these fistfights eventually escalating to knife fights, and unfortunately from there it didn't take long for firearms to enter the mix, and soon the clashes between these two groups would become deadly, to numerous mass brawls and tit-for-tat violence in the area. And so while the MPK and the Edmonton Shank Stars are warring, so too are Tottenham Star Gang warring with the Wood Green Mob. In fact, it was reported that around 20 violent incidents where weapons were used took place between Wood Green and Tottenham in an eight-week period in early 2000. 2005. This included the shooting of a 17-year-old on Broadwater Farm, three shootings in one day in April, and a hit and run on Wood Green High Road that ended up injuring an innocent eight-year-old. With these back and forths leading up to another incident in 2005 where this beef reached deadly new heights. As on May the 1st, 2005, 22-year-old Andre Linton from Tottenham is shot dead at close range after his car was surrounded by six youths in Wood Green. Somebody involved in the incident was identified as Jermaine Campbell, who courts were told was a member of Wood Green Mob. In fact, the very same person had actually been sentenced to three years back in 2002 for being part of that notorious Wood Green mugging squad. And after being found guilty of the murder, he would end up being sentenced to 25 years in prison. Apparently showing no remorse to the very end, coldly taunting his victims in court, winking and making shooting hand gestures towards them from the dock. It's no surprise then that retaliations were seen in the area, with Get Back getting deadly on the 28th of October 2006, when a Wood Green mob affiliate named Jerome Vassal was shot in the head outside of a Wood Green community center, a shooting which left him brain damaged and paralyzed, with it taking over a year for him to succumb to his injuries and eventually pass away. Eight people were arrested in this incident, but none were charged. At this point, the streets were super hot and the beef between these areas was getting serious. And at a certain point, an alliance forms between the Wood Green mob and the Edmonton Shank Stars. And so, stylized in green, Wood Green to Edmonton Green would become known collectively as Green City, with green bandanas signifying alliances between sets that operate in these areas. Suddenly, their beef with the crews in Tottenham throwing up the red bandanas and NPK rock in purple was looking like some real bloods and crip shit or 
Grove Street versus the Ballers, actually, if you think about it. In 2007 and 2008, the beef only intensified with more bloody battles between these two groups taking place. This included another mass brawl outside of a Texaco again, of all places. That's where drill rappers are sponsored by petrol stations or something. Anywho, with so much crime and violence spilling into the streets, the battle between Tottenham and Edmonton would eventually reach the police's radar, especially in November 2007, when a massive street fight took place between members of NPK and Shank Stars, where numerous people were left with stab injuries, and the court being told that those responsible went on to rap about the crimes in songs. In the end, the police used DNA evidence to slap heavy sentences on members from both sides, and the increased police attention that was placed on the groups around this time definitely had the block hot for a couple of years. And as these years went by, new generations of tough guys emerged from the same areas, eventually inheriting the beef from their elders, and repeating the cycles of violence seen by previous generations. He pretty much say the same thing I be saying, man. The cycles just repeat itself, man. That's why I feel like a lot of these beefs and gang lifestyle and shit just won't never really disappear because so much history behind the shit and why it happens and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is going to be lifelong type shit. Like the only way it's going to end for some of these beasts is if everybody that's involved pretty much is out the way or something happens where they all get locked up and stuff like that. But realistically, that just won't never happen. It's always going to be somebody coming up behind them to take their place or whatever. Um, pretty much from being a younger person to an adult type shit. So at the end of the day, people are getting groomed into this lifestyle from since they were shorties up to their adult years and stuff. So the cycle is never really going to have a chance of stopping at all. Like, it's just gonna be a continuation for however long it needs to go. So that's just how I look at it though, man. But other than that, let's continue on. Mass brawls and stabbings in Wood Green continued through 2008, and with police vowing to put a stop to the violence, cops were trying out new techniques of calming things down, including banning people from their own areas to try and stop violence being committed. In fact- Now, nah, shoot, that's what happens with some of the artists out here. Like. Y'all, if y'all know y'all history but, um, with Chief Keith and how he can't go back to Chicago and shit, it's pretty much the same situation. Not only is he not able to go back because of the court and the police trying to get him locked up for other stuff going on in his personal life, but they also pretty much ban him from going to his own hood just because of the simple fact they deem him the reason why a lot of this stuff that's going on in the streets is going on. Um, they blame him for a lot of that because of the music and all that shit. And they really don't want to have him in Chicago at all doing anything. Like, they just really want to lock him up and put him away. But at the end of the day, a lot of the shit that's going on in the streets ain't always just on him. It's other reasons why stuff is going on. But at the end of the day, they're going to try to go after the people that's mainly in the public eye. Like, got a huge following and stuff like that so they feel like he's one of those type of guys where they gotta definitely just pretty much keep him away from chicago at the end of the day and out his hood because of simple fact that's just what it is what it is they just look at him as the reason why a lot of this stuff is going on so i feel him on that but at the end of the day they not really looking into the little shit that's going on with the people that's not in the public eye like that it's people that's just strictly doing street shit not in the music and all of that um being in the public eyes and stuff like that it's other stuff going on where situations like murders and fights and robberies going on between these people that's not really getting that much public light and stuff like that so at the end of the day they can't just target certain people and make it seem like if this person was in jail, a lot of the shit that's going on would stop. It's not going to stop at the end of the day. They just don't really have an answer or a solution to solve the problems going on and stuff. They're not even really looking into some of these situations and seeing why they is the way it is and who started what and so on and so forth. Who's committing all the crimes for sure and stuff like that. They just pretty much trying to paint the picture of this person is just responsible for everything. Like, it is what it is. That's just how I look at it. But um, at the end of the day, 
they got to do better. They got to go really figure out why some of these things are going on and stuff like that. And not just try to put the blame on one entire person. Like, it's other reasons and other people for why the streets is the way it is right now. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, man. And a lot of these street problems ain't never going to be solved realistically, no matter what. Not even the people of the community can solve these problems and stuff. Um, at the end of the day, it's all in to the people that's in the streets hands on if these problems ever get solved. Because if not, the violence is just going to continue. I just That's how I feel about it. Like, only way it's going to really solve all this shit and put shit away is if these guys in the streets find a way to settle their differences. But like I said, realistically, I don't see that ever happening. There's just too much going on. Murders, robberies, and other type of crimes and shit. So that's why these crimes is going to continue on for, for a long period of time. I don't see no stop coming to it. So other than that, let's continue on. The guy from this article who was banned from Wood Green was another early rapper called G Money. Again, this was back in 2009 when UK rap that was about street goings on was referred to as road rap. And at this point, there was way less money or clout in the rap game than there would be later when the UK drill scene had flourished. In fact, around this time, many of the young men associated with these areas begun to dabble with music, releasing road raps of their own. Tion Wayne from The Nine was dropping songs and the future OFB pioneers like Heady One and RV were dropping Wood Green disses recorded on their block. But it would be nearly 10 years before rappers from both of these areas would be considered greats. And in that time, there would be an insane amount of bloodshed as individuals would end up being killed on both sides of this beef and with details about the goings on in the dangerous underworld of North London, eventually finding its way into those road raps. North London was not a safe place to be in the decade that followed. And for a long stretch of time, it seemed like murder after murder was taking place in these areas. In April... NordVPN in 2021 is one of the most promoted VPNs out yeah, there. It's heavily advertised says, online, but... I one of the main reasons why these beef is going on, because of murders. Once a person's life is took, that person, there is no bringing that person back. There's none of that. So, like I said, some of y'all got to be able to put yourselves in these people's shoes. A lot of the reason why these beefs is going is because of murder. They're losing people that was close to them and that they had a real personal connection with, um, best friends, et cetera, et cetera. Like these people grew up with each other. Once you take that type of person away from a person, you're gonna want revenge. You're gonna wanna do something to somebody. You're gonna be angry. You're gonna be mad for probably the rest of your life because you lost somebody that you pretty much really cared about and shit. So at the end of the day, that's what the, the type of anger people is carrying nowadays. They lost a friend or something like that, a family member, and they just don't know how to cope with that. They just feel like revenge and retaliating is the only way they can really settle the differences that's going on and stuff. So that's why this violent shit is continuing and on and on and on. If murder didn't happen, I feel like a lot of the crimes and stuff, beefs today really wouldn't be how they are. But like I said, once murder gets involved, changes everything. And pretty much that warrants a long time beef to happen. So that's it is what it is when I when it comes to that. So y'all comment down below how y'all feel about that, but the way I look at it, murder definitely plays a huge role in some of these beefs for sure. But other than that, let's continue on. April 2011, 15 year old Negus McLean, aka Chop, labeled by the BBC as a member of Edmonton N9 space set called Dem Africans Gang, was murdered by a gang hunting posse of four, armed with knives, stabbing him to death in a grisly incident that was described in court. Four people were later found guilty of murder in this case, apparently members of Enfield's EN3 Get Money Gang. Another murder in the area, which is wrapped about by three times three members frequently, occurred at 9.45 pm on Monday, the 1st of April 2013, when 19 year old Mohammed Hussein, aka 
aka Chicken, was killed by a shotgun blast on Bounces Road in Edmonton following an argument, with the news reporting the scene as something straight out of an old Western movie, with 21-year-old Nat Neil Tespe given a life sentence for the murder, which authorities said was gang-related, with the modern-day rappers from 3 Times 3 frequently rapping that he should be free. Jumping forward to 2015, the blocks in the area were incredibly hot, as a lot of violence played out on both sides of the fence. On the 10th of January 2015, a teenager in Wood Green is murdered in his ends following a knife fight. That same month, an 18-year-old from Tottenham who went by the name Prophet, real name Isaiah Ekpaloba, robbed a home of a member of the Wood Green mob named JD before trying to flee in a taxi. He was chased with a knife by JD and eventually murdered, with JD from Wood Green being charged with the murder and getting life in jail. And it's around this moment that the streets begun to interact with the music, as A1 from The Nine dropped his song Op, uh, part two, where he dissed Prophet, as well as other people associated with OFB. However, Prophet wasn't the only fallen soldier from the area who would end up getting mentioned in music. On June the 15th, 2015, 22-year-old Lukey Maxwell was murdered in a stabbing in Northumberland Park. Lukey was well known to rappers from the area, particularly Tottenham grime legend Skepta, who ended up making the tribute song Lukey World, that even the king of rap himself, Drizzy Drake, ended up sharing. I will say this about music. Like I said, the huge reason I believe the majority of these beefs is going on is because of murder. But when it comes to music, the way I look at it, it's just adding more fuel to the fire that was already burning. It's not like somebody, uh, it's not like music is the number one reason these beefs is going on. Like the uh, law enforcement is trying to portray it to be the reasons that a lot of this stuff is going on. Like I said, the actual crime itself, m mostly murder, is why the beef is going on. Music is just adding fuel to that fire, pretty much. The fire was already burning. It was already there. So, at the end of the day, I still wouldn't blame music for the reason why a lot of this stuff is going on. Because at the end of the day, murder is the reason why a lot of this stuff going on. And people want retaliation. People want revenge and shit. So, that's how I look at it. But I still wouldn't blame music for the reason why these crime rates is the way it is. It's just that simple. But y'all comment down below how y'all feel about that. Let's continue on. In the form of a picture of himself wearing a Lukey World t-shirt. Now, someone was charged in that case with murder, but those charges were eventually dropped. Also in June 2015, Renea Campbell, aka Mello from Wood Green, is stabbed to death outside a party, with two people eventually being convicted from Northumberland Park in Tottenham. So with this deadly beef going down in the streets, you'd think the safest place to be would be inside. But hell, even in prison, members from these areas are getting touched. In October 2016, Jamal Mahmood, aka Chaos, is murdered in HMP Pentonville Prison, being stabbed in an argument allegedly over a parcel of drugs, before being thrown over the railings of the landing, dropping about 30 feet. The alleged killers beat their case once again, with the media identifying Chaos as a member of the GMG gang from Enfield. So again, whilst not actually part of this beef, Chaos is another name that would go on to be heavily disrespected by three times three members in their raps. In fact, it really seemed like the trend of smoking dead ops on social media was also really taking off in North London around this time. Another AP member from Enfield known as Skengs, apparently the brother of Chaos, who was murdered in prison, is seen on social media dissing Wood Green and saying he's smoking mellow in 2016. And I can share the thing mellow to the dome. Then, completely independently of the beef between these two areas, in December 2019, Skengs is murdered by one of the customers he sold drugs to, apparently beating him with a claw hammer and stabbing him to death, then putting the murder weapons and the body in a big sheet that he hid in his attic, with the crime only being discovered a whopping eight months later, after the killer bragged to his friends about the crime and even showed somebody the rotting body in the attic. Now, eventually, two people are jailed for this crime. That story... Definitely on a special type of crazy if you got somebody dead body pretty much rotting away in your attic. Like, that's crazy. And for eight months at that. And I was surprised the smell, the odor, and all that didn't like pretty much go anywhere like nobody didn't smell anything crazy or nothing like they literally did hit this man's body for eight months that's crazy now that's something that's rare i ain't never heard that 
often. Like somebody hiding somebody dead body for months in their house. Like I never heard that like that. But this is definitely a rare case right here for sure. The story's just wild. And you know what? It really reminded me, actually, of what happened to Corbin Johnson, who went missing for an entire year in the video I did on the deadly gang war in Jacksonville. And just like Corbin, following his passings, Skengs was disrespected on numerous songs by the likes of 3x3, with some even being seen on social media smashing up a mural to Skengs in his area. Now look, not everything I've mentioned up till this point is necessarily connected or related. But what I'm trying to do is just give you a backdrop to the wild shit that was going on in this area during the time that UK drill music as we know it today was finding its voice. This is the environment drill rappers were coming up in, and these are the situations that they would be speaking about in their music. And over time, a lot of young men from these areas would begin to release absolutely fire music, finally getting themselves a chance to make money legally and get into a lucrative career on a path of safety away from the streets. But for some, even with the opportunity of going straight through music on the table, the temptation to slip back into old habits comes strong. And time after time, the unfortunate truth is it seems like people from this area were forced to choose a safe career making music and staying away from the streets or choose violence. Success is never on, you know, I just rent it and the rent is due every day. Thinking about like how I can market myself. So whilst the violence is raging in the streets of North London, some of the young men from these areas are trying to find another way out through music, particularly Tion Wayne from The Nine, who had slowly been building up a buzz and showing constant improvements on the mic, dropping two volumes of his Wayne's World mixtape series, the latter of which has the track Get Doe 2, which in my opinion is one of my favorite and very underrated Turner and Tion tracks. Hope they drop a part three. Anyway, in my opinion, at this point, Tion Wayne was carving out a very special and unique place in UK rap. So this was way before UK Drill had really kicked off. And Tion was kind of making these tracks that sat somewhere kind of between road rap and R&B rap, kind of singing about girls with like a little bit of Afro beats influence in there. He was doing his thing and his 2016 track, Me or The Lifestyle, is a prime example of what I'm talking about. You know, it's sort of a love song about finding a girl that you can trust, but set to a backdrop of kind of street shit. It's good stuff. However, the unfortunate truth is as Tion's buzz was reaching new highs, with him booking shows around the country, even opening up for Rick Ross at one point, sadly, after one of these shows, Tion Wayne would be confronted with a moment of madness and in a split second decision, he would choose violence and end up losing everything he had worked so hard for up until that point. As on March the 4th, 2017, Tion Wayne was arrested for a fray after taking part in a mass brawl and stamping on some guy's head outside of a nightclub concert in Bristol. An incident which was captured on CCTV video, but is definitely too raw to show you on YouTube. Anyway, it's said that around a hundred people were fighting in the street, some were armed with weapons and others were even swinging the barriers around. For his role in this incident, Tion Wayne ended up being sentenced to 16 months in prison, and he would later rap on his number one song body when i punch man it's grievous they played back the cctv when i banged him my defense said jesus so for the majority of 2017 tion wayne was gone and the momentum that he had been building up in the rap game slammed to a halt too ironically though as tion was going in on the territory of his rivals over in tottenham the 30-month sentence that heady one got in 2014 for dealing drugs was coming to an end in february 2017 heady one gets out of jail and quickly releases his fresh home song losses and winnings quickly hitting the ground running with his day one homie RV, with them doing up a whole bunch of fire freestyles as a duo. They released a joint mixtape, Drillers and Trappers, in July, and throughout the rest of 2017, in the absence of Tion Wayne, RV and Heady One are making some serious waves in music. And not just as a duo, because Heady is putting in that work solo, truly trying to make a name for himself. His Street Heat freestyle was legendary and got people excited to hear more solo hits from him. And the crazy thing is, if you think about it, both of these guys ultimately could have lost their careers or potential start at a mainstream rap career. But they was able to get through what they got through, had to deal with and come out, continue on their career and take off and still ultimately become mainstream rap artists. So that's definitely a, a huge... Um, what you want to say accomplishment for them, man, because anybody in their position could have easily gave up and said, damn, I lost my traction. I'm sitting in jail now for all this time. People might not be rocking with me on the music shit when I get out because times have changed and shit. And all, uh, like I said, a lot of time went by. They ultimately could have just gave up, but they didn't. So shout out to them, man. They didn't give up and then let that break them. 
and now they got a career that like they envision. So shout out to them. Other than that, let's continue on. And in October 2017, his solo banger live from the tea drops and doesn't disappoint fans. So with Heady picking up that heat in the streets, the UK drill scene begins to get more and more popping. And it's not just OFB making progress with the music too, because at a certain point, the Wood Green members decide to get in on the action too. In October 2017, Lamps from Wood Green, along with his homies Rams and Rids, released their drill song, No Lies, containing numerous lyrics where Lamps disses NPK rivals, with this track being followed with the song Looking for Who, another track where Lamps from Wood Green says that he's regularly stabbing people from the N17 postcode. And so, with the feud between these areas getting more and more public and finding its way into music, that feud would eventually once again spill out into the streets. And at the start of 2018, there would be a series of high-profile clashes between members of these crews. On the 26th of January 2018, Heady One is attacked by Wood Green members after playing a show at Bedfordshire Uni not far from London. Here, he's confronted by Wood Green members outside of a university accommodation, where he's basically threatened, dragged around, beaten, and kind of chased off the campus, all the while tucking his hand into a man bag as if he has a weapon, but one is never produced. But what's even more shocking than the incident itself is the brazen way those that carried it out filmed the entire thing and posted it up to Snapchat. Once it was up, the footage was circulating quickly amongst the drill community, and people were clowning Heady One heavily for catching what was perceived to be a bad violation. But the disrespect wouldn't last for long, because as Heady One himself said, this L would soon turn into a W, and the very next day, a shooting went down in Wood Green, where a 19-year-old man was hit, but he fortunately survived. And in the immediate aftermath of the shooting, OFB member RV is seen dissing the Wood Green Ops on Snapchat, seemingly referencing this incident. Apparently even going as far as to drive past the crime scene afterwards, posting a clip on his Snapchat along with some Kermit emojis. Hedy also tweeted after this, saying first half he got set up by a girl, second half excellent finish. I guess suggesting that a point had been scored and that they were even now. Three people were arrested under investigation following this incident, but no one was ever charged. But more importantly, also within a day of this supposed get back, Hedy One and RV would jump back on the mic, releasing the biggest drill song of the year, the classic No Better. The song is all about Hedy One basically suggesting that he did indeed have a gun with him that day in the bag, but that he knew better than to pull it out with the ops filming him on Snapchat going on to suggest that the op should have known better than pulling that stunt on him, with numerous lyrics suggesting that the shooting that took place the next day was related to the incident, but stopping just short of incriminating himself by replacing any specific details with the ad lib shh. Something that Hedy didn't necessarily invent, but he definitely popularised with this track that many people believe completely changed UK drill for good. No Better was such a huge success that within a month, Hedy One had signed a full-blown record deal with Sony's Relentless Records imprint, who re-released No Better commercially. It's kind of ironic that Hedy One sort of had to be subjected to a horrible physical gang altercation in order to get the attention that he needed to sign a legit record deal. But how he got it doesn't matter. The important thing was that Hedy was now officially on and in the industry, well positioned to focus on music, and get out these streets. Unfortunately, however, in the days that followed the No Better incident, the streets of North London would be as hot as ever. And less than a week after this happened, Wood Green members would retaliate, claiming the life of a young man from Tottenham, sparking a violent wave of killings that would go on for years to come. And we're gonna end it right there, man. Yeah, cause this video is already about to be like the close to 30 minutes so i'm gonna end it right here but um this is pretty much the end of part two part three coming soon but if you guys enjoyed my reaction to this video make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe don't forget to tell your family and friends about the video hopefully they become supporters of the channel as well and hopefully this video gets recommended to a large audience of people and hopefully bringing new supporters to the channel as well and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss out on new uploads. And to be sure you don't miss out on new uploads, check out the channel every day before y'all go to bed or when y'all wake up in the morning. And don't forget to follow my IG at LME Art. I hope we get to 500 followers. And all my other social media platforms will be down in the description box down below as well. So definitely head there and don't forget to um, check them out and follow me and add me. But other than that, that's pretty much the end of this video. And I'm going to catch y'all later on with more. Peace.